Oh, I need to turn on my music. <laughs> Copyright infringement! Okay. And today I'm going to be talking about Insidious Chapter 3. Um, I just got around to watching it. I didn't actually go see it in theaters. I just... Not that I didn't want to. I just... I guess I just didn't find the time, so it's on demand right now, so I watched it on demand, and I gotta say I liked it. Um, I feel like Insidious, the Insidious movies are like one of the only movie series I've seen where every time a sequel comes out, I like it better than its predecessor. Like, I saw the first one, I was okay with it, I liked it. Saw the second one, liked it better than the first one. <laughs> and then after watching this third one, I like it better than the first and second one. <laughs> um, I don't know why that is. I don't, I don't know, but I like them more each time I see a sequel, um, which is weird. That doesn't normally happen with sequels for me anyway. So that's cool. Um, I figured I would talk about it as it's a pretty popular movie series I think. <laughs> I don't know, maybe none of you guys like Insidious out there, but I feel like it's kind of popular, a more popular mainstream horror series, franchise, whatever. This third chapter of Insidious is directed by Lee Wanell. Wanell? I have no idea, like, you guys, <laughs> I am so not good at pronouncing names. Whatever. And this is his first time directing any movie whatsoever, but he does have writing credits for the first three Saw movies, Dead Silence, and the first two Insidious movies. And he plays Specs in the Insidious films, so he's no stranger to horror, but this is his first time directing, and I mean, considering I like this movie, this third movie, better than the first two, I think he did a great job, so there's that. Good job, good job. You guys probably already know, but this third chapter of Insidious is a prequel to the first two films. Um, this is before the Lambert haunting, haunting, whatever. And it's kind of a split story. They, like when, when I've seen descriptions of the plot, they mostly focus on Elise's story played by the wonderful Lin Shay. I think they do a really good job of kind of splitting the story. Like it's not just about Elise and how she comes to use her gift to help other people. Um, it's equally about um, this teenage girl, Quinn, who is the target of the haunting in the movie. Um, she, her mother recently passed away and she's been trying to contact her. Of course, she, like kind of when the presence starts to make itself known, at first Quinn thinks it's her mother trying to contact her, but then as the attacks grow more and more insidious uh, and terrifying, Quinn realizes that it's not her mother trying to contact her and it's something else, which leads to her father trying to find ways to help her. One of those ways being reaching out to Elise. Um, and in this movie, Elise is, she's not like she is in the first two films because this is a prequel. So in this one, Elise starts off more kind of like reclusive and scared. Uh, we learned that her husband killed himself. Um, I think, I can't really remember right now, but I think it's mentioned that he also had the same gift she did and he killed him. I think it's kind of hinted at that he killed himself because of it. Um, and you can kind of see Elise is very much haunted by her gift. She mentions that there is a woman who is now, who has been following her um, every time she uses this gift and says she's gonna kill her and she's gonna kill her. Um, and we do see the woman and it is the same antagonist from the Lambert hauntings that we'll see in the first two films. So 
So that's interesting. Um, so she starts off very reclusive and kind of scared and just frightened and not wanting to use her gift. And she has this wonderful, she gets this wonderful character arc where she transforms from the scared, kind of sad woman, scared of her own gift and her own self, and then she turns into the Elise, or starts to turn into the Elise that we know from the first two films. Uh, and there is like a cute little meeting of, <laughs> like where Elise and Tucker and Specs all come together to help Quinn, and then at the end, Elise is like, we should go into business together, blah, blah, blah. And it's, <laughs> it's cheesy, but <laughs> kind of cute, because then you're like, ah. Points to director and writers and everybody for covering Elise's and Quinn's story equally well. Like sometimes, I know they kind of marketed it, marketed it, it that sounds, a, that's a weird word to say, marketed it, marketed it, mar they, they sold it as, Elise's story I think more than Quinn's story but when you actually watch the movie they split it equally between the two and normally when you kind of have that going on I feel like one of the stories kind of fall one of the stories kind of falls short I don't think that happened here and I think they covered them both equally well and I cared about both characters equally for the most part the thing I really I think why I enjoyed this movie more than the previous two Insidious films was because I feel like Insidious relies on a lot of jump scares um, and I feel like this one, while it did have its jump scares, I think it relied more on the tension building, kind of like slow building terror and I liked that a whole lot more. So that was great. I think they did a good job with that. I think that's why I liked it more because I prefer that to jump scares. Um, but there is one really good jump scare, the very like last second of the entire film. A lot of times you can see it coming. I think that's why I like it. I kind of like Insidious a lot, even though they do rely on jump scares. They, uh, I just feel like at least what I can remember, I could be wrong or at least in this third movie, when they do do a jump scare, they don't really use the sound at all. They rely more on a visual jump scare and I think that's why it gets me because at like, cause you know, like the sound, like you know the formula for a jump scare, like the, the music or whatever kind of swells and then it drops for a second and you think you're okay and then all of a sudden, bam, there's another loud noise and then something, interrupts your vision and that's the jump scare. So I think I think Insidious for the most part when they give you a jump scare they don't give you those sound cues as much and then all of a sudden it's in your face and then so <laughs> if that makes any sense at least the jump scare at the very end is like they did that perfectly there was no like sound cue that I had no idea was coming and it got me really good. <laughs> um, so points for that you guys got me on a jump scare. I feel like I've, I'm a seasoned enough horror fan that I can tell when a jump scare is coming, but that one I did not see coming, good job. And it kind of relates back to that iconic jump scare in the first one. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, that one with the face behind the face, that's all I'm gonna say about it. So overall, I, I did enjoy this movie. Um, I feel like a lot of mainstream-ish horror movies kind of fall flat, especially for seasoned horror movie fans. I feel like for the most part we, we see those and we're kind of just like, you know. <laughs> so mainstream, you know, just too mainstream for me. Um, <laughs> but I think this one did a really good job and I quite enjoyed watching it. And like I said, it's out of, out of the three Insidious movies so far, I think this one is my favorite one. Um, I kind of hope they stop here though. I don't, I don't want to see any more Insidious unless they want to do just like some awesome, ridiculous Elise, Specs, and Tucker movie. That would be amazing. Specs and Tucker are what I call the scene stealers. <laughs> they're just those characters that, they're not the main characters, but every time they're in a scene, they just take it, they steal it, and they just make it amazing. And every time they're on screen, <laughs> 
it's just all you can see is those two and they're amazing those characters are great um so i would like to see like some specs and tucker kind of movie that would be amazing um but other than that i think they can leave it at three three is a good number to stop at for the most part so yeah um overall i would definitely recommend watching this movie if you haven't seen it yet and i think Really, for the most part, I don't think you would really need to watch the first two Insidious movies to watch this. More Lynn Shay movies, please. More Lynn Shay in horror movies. She was a complete badass in this third one. I love her so much. Every time I see her though, I, I always just see, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Detroit Rock City. I love that movie. That's like one of my favorite not horror movies. And her character is absolutely wonderful in that movie. She is definitely a scene stealer in that film. Um, so more Lynn Shay horror movies, please. She's a badass in this one and I love it. Anyways, besides the point, uh, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of my face and hear more of my voice. And thank you if you are subscribed already. And until next time, stay strange. Bye.